Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today is Tip Tuesday and today's Tip Tuesday came as a special request from several of you guys. I've had several messages asking about manual die cutting machines and I have mentioned in some of my videos, um, particularly my recent um, gratitude documented supplies video, I talked about die cutting some leaves that I had stamped out. And I didn't show how I did that. Um, and oftentimes I don't show myself die cutting on camera. And so some people had some questions about what that is and how that works and all that goodness. So um, today I'm gonna be talking about the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine. Um, this was sent to me by scrapbook.com last year um, during one of their promotionals and things like that. But I have used it nonstop. I do have a larger die cutting machine. Um, it is the Big Kick machine and it works and it's great but as far as the price point I think this is a way better value and I get more use out of this one because of the way it stores so um, I will link both down below so you can check them out but this is the one I will be showing you guys um, how I use in this particular video and it is smaller and a lower price point and so it works more for what I do in my projects, which is Bible journaling and memory keeping. Um, if you're going to be die cutting into things like leathers and corks and things like that, then you may want a more heavy duty machine. However, this will cut through those as well. So you just kind of have to decide what works for you and your budget. But um, there are a lot of different things that you can do with these machines. Now I know these machines can seem pretty pricey. I believe this one's around $70 or $80 or so, um, depending on if you get a whole bundle of things or not. And so that can be an investment. And But I wanted to show you there are so many different ways that you can use it. Now I do also have a Silhouette Cameo cutting machine. That is a cutting machine that works with my computer. I will not be talking about that in this video. That's a whole different um, thing and it does different things. And so that won't be addressed. We're just going to talk about manual die cutting machines. So um, one of the great things about this machine is working with stamp and die sets. So um, during this time of year, I'm super busy. And so when Right at Home asked if they could send me the stamp set with all of the leaves, I asked if she would send me the coordinating die set. And so this is one of the things that's really great about these is it cuts down on fussy cutting. So um, there are a lot of stamp sets out there that have coordinating die sets. They are a little bit more pricey. Dies can be kind of expensive. Um, but if it's a set that you know that you're gonna get a lot of use out of and it's gonna save you the time of cutting, then it's worth it to invest in the matching die. So not all stamp sets come with a die set that you know matches with it, but some do. So. This one here is from Right at Home, and I showed it in my recent video. I'll link it down below. And so this has dies that go along with the stamp set, so you can cut out your stamped image. But that's not all you can do with one of these. You can also just cut out um, dies that don't necessarily have a matching stamp set, so like alphabet dies. Um, Sizzix has a lot of these. This floral die from Tim Holtz, you can cut out of colored papers. You don't have to have a stamp set to match with it. Um, um, and then you could also emboss. So there's embossing folders that leave a texture on your papers. You can use these with this machine as well. And you can also emboss, emboss textures with your dies. So some dies have details in them to cut, but also emboss texture. And I'll show you some different ways to use those. So there are several different ways that you can use these. There are all kinds of videos on YouTube showing really creative techniques um, out there as well. So definitely check that out if you are new to this and have some questions about that. Um, but let's kind of talk about what comes with the Platinum 6 when you order it and why I prefer it over some of the other machines. So the Platinum 6 is the smaller machine, but it folds up. So it's so much easier to um, store. And if you're going to take it to, you know, get togethers and Bible journaling and things like that, it's easier to take with you. Um, but even just for storing, it's so much easier because it folds all up small. Um, it does have little rubber grippies, so it's not wiggling around on my desk, so that's super nice. Um, and then when you order the Platinum 6, even just the basic bundle, it comes with um, all the plates you need to get started. So, and I'll kind of talk about sandwiches and things like that, but um, it comes with your um, platform and the platform has on it all the directions for the different sandwiches that you need to cut or emboss different things and sandwiches just mean the combination of plates that you're going to use with dies or embossing folders um, to get the best results and so this shows you how to set that up so it does come with the platform it also comes with two um, cut plat um, cut 
cutting plates and mine are filthy and dirty and used and probably about due for a new one. Um, this is normal for your dies to leave impressions in your cutting plates. That's what these are for. Um, you want this to get cut up and not your platform to get cut up. So this saves your platform from getting cut up. Um, and so what I usually do is have the messy one on the bottom all the time and then the not so messy one on the top. And then as this one gets needs to be <laughs> swapped out, I'll move this to the bottom and then I'll buy a new set and kind of switch them out that way. So you can replace these. Um, and so it comes with two of those. But one neat thing about this um, particular die machine is it also comes with your embossing mat if you're wanting to do embossing and your embossing plate. So my other machine, my Big Kick machine, you actually have to buy these as separate. Um, so I like that this comes with everything and you're ready to get started. So let's just talk about basic die cutting and what that looks like and how to build a sandwich. So um, we are going to stamp and cut out. So you can either cut first and then stamp or stamp and then cut. I like to stamp and then cut. That's kind of my preferred way to do it. So I'll go ahead and take this leaf stamp here. Go ahead and stamp this out. And I'm just using regular cardstock. Okay, and then you can take the matching die set. Now what I have my dies stored on, this is actually magnetic um, covers that are meant to go over the floor vents in your house. And so I'm gonna link these down below. They come in big, huge sheets and then I just cut it down and my dies stick right onto that and then I can store it with my stamps. So I will link this down below for you guys. It's a very cost effective way um, to store them. So I'll go ahead and pick my matching die. Now the way these dies work, they have a flat side and then they also have the cutting blade side. Now it isn't sharp to the touch. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself, um, but there is a ridge. Now you want to turn that cut down. So cut shape or cut blade down. I'll just make sure that I am lined up around my stamped image. Now I like to use a little bit of washi tape to hold my die in place. Sometimes your die can kind of wiggle and shift as it goes through your die cutting machine. So I just take a little bit of washi and stick it to the back of my hand to remove a lot of the stickiness. And then I'll just use this to hold my die in place so it doesn't shift. Okay, so now we're gonna build our sandwich. So I've got our platform, and that's all right here for you, showing you how to do it. You're gonna want one of your cutting plates. So I put the messy one down. So we have platform, messy cutting plate. Then you're gonna stick your paper with the die cut blade facing down, and then your top cutting um, plate. And so that is our sandwich before we run it through the machine. So I can go ahead and feed this through and there is a little bit of resistance but if it's really 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 hard for you to push through then you are your sandwich isn't right something's not right or you're using too thick of a material to cut through so now we can go ahead if you're using um, like 110 pound card cardstock or really intricate dies like word dies you may want to run it through twice just to make sure that you got a good a good impression um, but I know that these dies from right at home are really good quality and so first pass it goes ahead and cuts out my stamped image so I love love that it saves on having to um, fussy cut out things because <laughs> I don't have time for that. So, and then you can just go ahead and store your die. And of course you could use those to cut out leaf shapes without the stamp um, if you wanted to, but these are kind of intended to work with the matching stamp set. So let's talk about some of these other dies, like this one here. Actually, you know what, let's do an alphabet die. So alphabet dies don't necessarily have a matching stamp set. Some of them have matching stamp sets, but this one does not. And so this one you wouldn't need to um, stamp first, but I'm gonna make sure that I put it cutting blade down. And you can lay out several at a time. So sometimes I'll just lay out all the letters I'm gonna need for a particular word or project that I'm doing. I've got my stamp platform. I've got my messy cutting plate. Now I like to turn my cutting plate each time that I run it through. Um, I don't know if you can see this one is actually curved and that will happen over time if you're putting it through um, the same way all the time. So you do wanna flip it through and that kind of prolongs 
um, your cutting plate life. So I've got my paper, my die cut blade down. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and add another cutting plate, and then we can go ahead and run this through the die cutting machine. Sometimes you'll hear like some cracking. That is normal. Don't have to worry about breaking it. And then this one popped out nice and easy. And so now I've got my little letter. So you could cut these out of colored cardstocks, vellums. You could add paint and things to your cardstock before you cut them out. I will link some videos down below showing some different ways that I have done that. Now, if the paper is stuck in your die, which happens sometimes, it didn't this time, but if your paper gets stuck in here and won't pop out, you've got these little holes and you can use a pick tool to just pop out your paper and it'll pop right out of there. So these are kind of handy to have. I have the Tonic Studios one. Um, there's also the Spellbinders tool in one um, that's got you know a variety of tools, but this has the pick on it as well. So that's what those little holes are for. Okay, now let's talk about um, these dies. So these dies from Spellbinders have some more detail on them. Now all the dies I have shown you today are thinlets or thin dies or die delights. Um, anything that's thin or light. These are meant for cutting through thinner materials like papers, vellums, things like that. If you're going to get into cutting into fabrics and cork and wood veneer and chipboard and things like that, you're going to want steel rule dies. I don't have any steel rule dies. Those are significantly more expensive. There's a whole different sandwich that those work with. Um, Tim Holtz and Sizzix has a lot of alphabet steel rule dies and some of their basic shapes are steel rule dies. Um, and those are big, fat, chunky dies that are meant for cutting through thicker materials. So I primarily work with these thinner ones. The dies that come with stamp sets are typically the thinner ones that are meant for just basic cardstocks and papers and things like that. So this die here, this is from Spellbinders and this is the Fall Leaves set. And I don't know if you can see on the die, but it has this veining detail. So it's got this embossed veining detail and then the cut blade. So what this is going to do is it's actually going to cut out the leaf shape, but it's also going to emboss some detail into our cut shape. Shape. And there's a couple different ways you can use this. So same sandwich. I've got my platform, my messy cutting plate. I'm going to go ahead and put my paper and then I'm going to put it cut side down. And I'm going to tape that into place so it doesn't wiggle. And this one again doesn't have a matching stamp set. It's just the die by itself. Go ahead and add my top um, cutting plate and then we can run this through the machine here. And this one will probably stick in the die, yeah. So here's where I can show you how to use that pick here. So you can see my paper is stuck in the die. That's normal, that happens sometimes. This one has two little holes that I can just poke that pick through and then I can pull it out. So what you'll see, I don't know if you can see on camera, <clears throat> but it is actually cut out the leaf and then it has some veining detail. Let me ink it up and that'll be easier for you to see. Okay, so if I just take some Distress Ink and kind of ink this up, you should be able to see that veining a little bit better maybe. Kind of hard to see but in person I can see that there is this veining that's happening um, through the center of the leaf so um, that's kind of a nice little detail that some dyes have I know it's kind of hard to see on camera um, but let me show you a different way that you can use those um, dies for just embossing so let's just say I wanted to have a whole bunch of leaf texture on a piece of cardstock with ac without actually cutting the leaf out. So we are going to make an embossing sandwich. And so that is this one here, how to emboss a cut shape. So sometimes you have to, um, the embossing doesn't come through when you cut out the shape. They have different ways to do it, but um, that's a whole different thing. I don't have any dies that do that. I'm going to show you how to emboss the leaf impression into a piece of cardstock. So we're going to use this sandwich here. So we've got the embossing or the uh, platform. We're going to add our 
die cut blade up because we don't want to cut into this platform. We're going to add a piece of paper. So this is different than how we were doing our sandwiches before. So I've got my platform, my die, blade side up, a piece of paper. We're going to add our um, embossing mat. That's the flexible one. And then our embossing plate. And so this is actually a much thinner sandwich, so it's not going to create as much pressure, and that's what's going to keep it from cutting all the way through. So I'll go ahead and run this through, and you'll feel it's a lot easier to run through, not as much pressure, and this is just going to emboss that leaf impression into the cardstock. So we can remove all of this. And everything is safe and sound and you can see it did not cut out the leaf it just embossed the texture of the leaf into the paper and so if I run some distress ink over this I think you'll be able to see it a little bit better so now I've got that leaf impression in my paper so you could do a whole background and you can either use you know the back side or the front side depending on how you want the texture um, but now I've got this leaf pressed into the paper. So you could do a whole background like that would be really, really fun. So that is another way that you can use um, dies like this so you get a lot more use out of them. Um, let's talk about embossing folders. So similar idea with embossing folders. These ones here I get really inexpensively from Joann's or um, Michael's for like a couple bucks usually. Um, they have some fancier, nicer ones that do like 3D embossing and things like that, but this is a pretty, pretty basic one. So for this one, what you're gonna do is you're actually going to add some cardstock into the folder itself, just like this. And then we're gonna use the um, sandwich for embossing folders. And so that tells us to use the platform. You're just gonna have your paper in your embossing folder and then a one cutting plate. That's all you need. And again, all those sandwich formulas are right there on the platform for you. Um, so you don't even have to think about it. Now, when I go to roll this through, I can feel that there isn't a lot of pressure and that means it's not embossing. And so sometimes those sandwiches are just your basic to get you started. And depending on the type of cardstock or whatnot that you're using, you need a little bit more pressure. So that didn't really emboss much. So I need to increase the pressure a little bit. So I can do that by adding in a shim. So just another piece of cardstock um, or paper or something like that to increase the pressure. So I'm going to try running it through again. And that feels like there's a little bit more pressure. So sometimes you just kind of have to experiment and find out what works best for your particular machine or the um, paper that you're using. So that seemed to work a lot better. So now I have this embossed wood grain and I know it's going to be kind of hard to see on camera so let me go ahead and ink that up a little bit so you can see it better. And so this is just adding some texture to the cardstock, not cutting it, just adding texture. So if I ink that up you can see the texture that is added to the paper. And so just depending on what side that you want to use, whether you use the emboss or deboss side, um, and this is great for card backgrounds, maybe layering behind your photos, and really can just experiment, maybe um, embossing and adding texture and then using an alphabet die and then cutting out alphabets and having that texture on your alphabets would be really fun. So that is another way that you can use your die cutting machine. So. I know they can be kind of intimidating, especially if you haven't used one before, um, and there are a lot of different ways to use them. This is just a really quick, but long video, but quick way of looking at these um, die cutting machines and how they work and how I use them. Um, but check out YouTube if you have more questions. There's tons of tutorials out there um, and different ways that you can use the products with it and different products that go along with it. Um, but it's really helpful for, um, especially for stamping and die cutting. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Um, if you have any other ideas or requests for Tip Tuesdays, leave those down below. I'm trying to go through those and um, do some of those requests for you guys. Check out the description box for links to everything that I mentioned today. Like I said, this machine was sent to me by scrapbook.com, um, but I use it all the time and I love it. And I really think that it is a good um, value um, and one of the better priced machines out there. So check that out. Um, give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.